Hey guys, it's Fixerman1001 back with another video, and I have a triple unboxing for you today. The Mitchells vs. the Machines, Venom, Let There Be Carnage, and Spider-Man No Way Home. I still haven't, there's still a few other movies that I haven't bought yet, like No Time to Die, Ghostbusters Afterlife, Eternals, Shang-Chi, but I will get those eventually, but right now, this is what I wanted to get. These are Sony titles as well, so I'll start. I'll go in order of release. This is the Mitchells vs. the Machines. A masterpiece. An absolute masterpiece. It's a shame it wasn't, wasn't released on 4K. Um, this was directed by... Or, this was not directed by Phil Lowe and Chris Miller, but it was produced by them. Directed by Mike Rianda. But produced by Phil Lowe and Christopher Miller, and um, they're the guys who brought you into the Spider-Verse. And also directed the Lego movie, and created the TV show Clone High, which is a really good adult animated TV show, and this movie is definitely, this is, like, it's family friendly, but to me, this was not made to be a kid's movie, this is made to be, like, a artistic animated masterpiece, and it's coded autistic, too, which I really love that about it, it's a real shame that it didn't win at Best Animated Features, now, I didn't actually see Encanto, but I bet you, I can probably bet you it's not as good as this movie, like, this movie was probably... This and No Way Home tied for to be my favorite movie of the year of last year for different reasons. This was a the thing about this one though that kind of hurt its cha hurt its chances and made it not as popular was that it was released only it was released originally on Netflix. I know that they Sony still kept the TV rights. They were planning to release it theatrically originally, but then the COVID nineteen pandemic hit unfortunately, and they kept delaying the release. And then they decided they moved it from the schedule and decided to put it on Netflix instead. When it was released theatrically for a while, they retitled it Connected. But the Mitchells vs. the Machines was what it ended up being called eventually, so. But this was a, again, cannot say enough good things about it. This was 11 out of 10. you got to watch this movie. Uh, it's on Netflix right now. It's a Netflix original, so. But I wanted to get the Blu-ray for all the special features. There's the spine in the back. This is a, um. Yeah, it says Netflix presents a Columbia Pictures presentation, which... Yeah, so, and this is, is, has Katie's extended cinematic bonanza cut, I have no idea what that is, along with deleted scenes, filmmakers commentary, how a group of passionate weirdos made a big animated movie, how to make sock puppets, how to make Katie face cupcakes, and Katie's cabinet of forgotten wonders, along with all new mini movie, Dog Cop 7, the final chapter, and this is rated PG in Canada, and it stars, um, Danny McBride, Abby Jacobson, Maya Rudolph, Mike Rianda, Eric Andre, and Olivia Coleman. Definitely Olivia Coleman was a great villain in this. Now let me just open this up. I'll, pa I'll pause. Alright, so I took the plastic off. I just stuck the sticker on there. And I'm going to open it up just so I don't get the digital code um, stolen. Yep, yeah, so this is the digital code. Um, I'm covering it because I haven't added it yet. And there's the back in French. We have director notes inside the mind of Katie Mitchell. Can we see if you can pause and read that? And there's the other side. And then films from the star of the Mitchells vs. the Machines. No Country for Unpopular Teenagers, The Not Social Network, and The Monster That Was Nice and Cool But No One Liked for Some Reason. And then inside we have the Blu-ray. Let me just, um, I don't really like that kind of case, so be careful there. And then here's the DVD. Looks like it's written in Sharpie. That's kind of cool. So let me just put this all back in the case. Yep, definitely check that movie out. Next one is Venom, Let There Be Carnage. This is a movie that some people, I think, don't think liked, because a lot of people don't really like the Venom movies, especially since they're produced by A.V. Arad, who doesn't really have a good track record, but to me, the Venom movies are just fun. Now, I haven't seen Morbius yet, but I heard that was bad. I might go see it, I might not, I'm not sure, but um, Venom, definitely, I love the Venom. First one was great, but this one might have been even better, actually. I'll have to, I'll have to think about it, but both were amazing movies, I, and this one's actually quite short, too, for some reason, but it didn't need to be long, it was just a fun action-adventure, and it was great in 3D as well. Like Venom was very fun in 3D. And this one, I'm just going to open this up before I... Because of this whole thing, so I can see more clearly. Yeah, I just took the plastic off, and... 
no silk garment, unfortunately. This is interesting. The first one is rated 14 in Canada. This one is PG in Canada with not recommended for young children, violence, coarse language. I know that's, that some prov- some provinces gave it a 14A in Canada. I think my province did, actually, in the, in the theater. But for some reason, it's PG on DVD. I think a couple provinces gave it a PG, so I'm surprised about that. I thought more of them gave it 14A. I would have just assumed this was a 14A, but... Yeah. And this movie was very fun, definitely. I recommend it. Over an hour, special features on Blu-ray disc, including outtakes and bloopers, delayed scenes, Let There Be Action... Eddie and Venom, The Odd Couple, Sick and Twisted, Cleus Cassidy, Concept to Carnage, and more. And this was directed by Andy Serkis, you know, who um, play, is, played Gollum, you know, in Lord of the Rings. Great actor. And he also was in the movie Black Panther. He played Uly- Ulysses Claw. And this one this one stars um, Tom Hardy, Woody Harrelson, Michelle Williams, Naomi Harris, Reed Scott, Stephen Graham. Yeah, definitely a great... Very fun movie, and then let me just open it up with, um, we get the code out of there. Again, here's the code for the digital copy, and then in French on the back, I'm not going to show that because I don't want you stealing it. Get some nice artworks here, the, the 4K, you see them going at each other, and the regular Blu-ray, you see them two-faced. It's kind of cool. And then finally, this was the event movie event of last year. This is Spider-Man No Way Home. The movie where it was a love letter to the last 20 years of Spider-Man movies. Now, if you haven't seen the movie yet and don't want it spoiled, then stop watching this video right now because I will be saying spoilers. So, yeah, I just thought I'd warn you. All right, now, yeah, this was a last love letter to the last 20 years of Spider-Man because of all the villains, and finally, we got to see the return of the original two Spider-Man actors, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, which, Tobey Maguire was my childhood Spider-Man, and Andrew Garfield was pretty good too, but I, was, I wasn't I was as huge of a fan, but he was the one that in the theater got the biggest cheer when he first came, because his story was unfinished. And, like, Toby's was kind of complete, and Tom's is now just getting started, because this is a three-movie origin arc. But Andrew's felt incomplete, and I hope that he, like, I think that's nice that he's, he got a little bit of his due. If not fully, he got it due in this. And that scene when he saved MJ, that was so amazing. Like, I just love that. So, yeah, the, um... It was definitely a fun, fun movie. I didn't get to go see it in IMAX because I hit the night I had it was when some of the restrictions, some more restrictions due to Omicron variant came into my city, and look, well, the theaters were still open, but they they were doing it differently, so they refunded all tickets for that night that were in the old seating way. So I bought a ticket for the Thursday night and just regular, and that was great. Also, you might not have noticed one one scene. I remember I think it was near the beginning of the film. You hear a little sound on like a TV or like a ringtone or something. I can't remember. That is of the 1977 Spider-Man live-action TV show with Nicholas Hammond. Um, so that was quite an interesting touch. And um, yeah, this was a f- this was a movie that exceeded expectations. It's one of the best Spider-Man films ever. Like I think it's up there with Into the Spider-Verse and first two to- and then like Spider-Man two. Like Spider-Man one is on my favorite movie on my top ten because of nostalgia, but. Really, Spider-Man: No Way Home and Into the Spider-Verse are better films than that. Though Spider-Man Two will always be my fa- will always to me be the best and my favorite Spider-Man film. Definitely, like there's no contest, no nothing will ever replace that one. But still, um, No Way Home was when Tom Holland's Spider-Man truly became Spider-Man, and Aunt May sort of acted as the Uncle Ben, and I thought it was great. And yeah. Willem De- uh, this made, the movie definitely made me realize that um, the Green Goblin is basically Spider-Man's Joker, basically. is sort of insane, and, like, the, yeah. And Willem Dafoe, I always thought, could have played a great Joker, and he kind of did with the Green Goblin, I guess. Because, like, Ravencroft, which was in Venom, Let There Be Carnage, is kind of like Marvel, like Spider-Man's version of Arkham, and um, Black Cat is, like, cat, their version of Catwoman and stuff. So, yeah, it's kind of interesting. There's the spine, the other spine, and the back. Most exciting, surprising, and emotional spidey of them all. Definitely was a 
all those things. This is rated PG in Canada, with not recommended for young children, coarse language, and violence. Over 80 minutes of bonus, bonus content, including bloopers and gag reel, Spider-Man Unite, alternate reality Easter eggs, a multiverse of miscreants, I don't know how you say that, Enter Strange, a meeting of the spiders, and more. And this one actually, um, um, didn't, um, apparently this doesn't actually have deleted scenes, which is really, a lot of people were very peeved about that. I hope that eventually, like, I, I, I bought this, I hope that probably, uh, they probably will, will at some point, though, release a ultimate, like, special edition with, like, an extended edition or something with those scenes included, because, like, there's, a, there's quite a few, actually, that I know didn't make the cut. Because they had to cut a lot of things. Like, I know that with the pandemic, they actually had to rework the movie, too. Like, I met America Chavez, who was, who was going, Miss America, who was going to be in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, played by Sao Chil Gomez, was supposed to be in this film and was supposed to open the portals instead of Ned. That's what I've heard. And I've seen concept art. It looked like she was supposed to be played by Isabella Marseille, who, actually, fun fact, uh, was born, uh, Isabella Marseille was born the same day I was. That's not who's playing America Chavez, though. She's play, being played by Sao Chil Gomez, who is five years younger than that, but still, I guess she's she's a good actress, and I think she'll do very well, so, um, but anyways, doc, but with, um, a couple other things, I know that's Tom Holland's brother, Harry, was supposed to play a drug dealer in a scene, and that got cut, and apparently, Morgan Stark, uh, played by Lexi Rabe, who we saw in Avengers Endgame, she was Tony Stark's little daughter, was, um, supposed to make an appearance in this film, too, um, I think I even, so like, like I follow, I follow her on Instagram, she posted about, um, going to Atlanta, and having, like, a, te like, a private school t-shirt, a t-shirt as a costume, and I think that might have been when she was filming this movie, but she didn't, she got cut, apparently she went to the premiere, and, like, met Tom Holland again, I thought, I thought that was cute, that, 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 just like, um, just like she did at the Far From Home, she came to the No Way Home, and they had another picture together, because they're, like, they're, like, sort of, siblings by association um but that's what, that's how they say it um but she got cut in the movie and she said said like even though i got cut like she it sounded to me like she found out at the premiere which it's crazy how much they do that to people like, even like it's like when emma Furman got cut from um like, like she got fired she found out on twitter like she didn't find it like she was being placed by Catherine newton and i was very upset about that but Catherine newton's a good actress so she's gonna be a good cassie lang but yeah, I can't imagine. Though I did hear rumors that, like, like, not rumors, like, uncir I guess, I don't know if it's circumstantial or uncircumstantial evidence that Emma Furman is an anti-vaxxer, much like, um, Letitia Wright, but, like, like, because, like, it wouldn't surprise me, honestly, but, like, yeah. But, but still, I don't think it was right that they didn't tell her. But then again, we don't know the whole story, so, but back to, again, sorry, I'm rambling about that but yeah but still i don't like how they don't tell people that they're not getting in fact when vision actually <laughs> what happened was the complete opposite he thought he was gonna get fired so he um he they called him and he's like oh you're firing me i know he's like no we want you back for wandavision so yeah because he thought his character died in infinity war so uh but anyways yeah um back to spider-man yeah this was a still even with the the stuff it was a great movie but i would love to see an extended edition and if it ever came out of course i'd buy that too but this is a great release so far they're probably gonna pull that double dick trip on, dip trick on us though like they usually do like with days of future past they had a regular version and then they had a version called the rogue cut which had all different special features that's what i would hope if they did an extended cut release they would have all different special features much like the like i said the daredevil director's cut and the like, Punisher extended cut, and, like, the X-Men Days of Future Past, the world cut, so just speaking of other Marvel movies. And this one, of course, stars Tom Holland, Zendaya, Benedict Cumberbatch, Jacob Batalon, John Favreau, Marissa, with Marissa Tomei, and it, even though it doesn't say it on the back, again, this is why I said spoiler warning, with Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire. And this is directed by John Watts, same director of the, of the first two of these. And then there's the case without the Thing. Let me just open this up. Alright, this is what it looks like without the plastic on it. Now let me open it up. Let me just grab the code first. Again, this is the digital code. And in French on the back. So on the 4K, you have Dr. Octopus. He's probably my favorite Spider-Man movie villain, definitely. 
And then on the Blu-ray had the artwork from the 4K for some reason. Interesting. So yeah. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and rate, comment, subscribe. And just so you know, also, I haven't uploaded any videos on it yet. I'm planning to soon, though. It's um, called Pixar Man 2001 Takes Halifax Transit. It's a new channel I created. Um, I mostly opened it so I could store some more Google Drive files. But I also figured I'd use it to share some videos of going on Halifax Transit, my local transit system. So yeah, um, this is Pixar Man 2001 signing out. Peace.